thanks very much, Rona, for taking your time out to help us with our help vi with our help video. That's great. We're trying Mary, to get no um, problem. we're trying to get some key messages out there within the traveling community. Fantastic, Mary. Yeah, fair play to you. You're very, very right, good. Right. Yeah. I think um, they've asked me today to talk about um, smoking in pregnancy, Mary. Um, so um, I suppose I just want to give some advice about that, if that's okay, and how important it is to stop smoking in pregnancy. Say from, I suppose, the, really the minute that you find out you're pregnant, the ideal is to stop smoking, really, because it's better for the baby and better for your health also. Um, Smoking in pregnancy can cause various complications. It can cause miscarriage, first of all, early on in pregnancy. Um, it can cause various maybe abnormalities along the line. Um, and it also can cause maybe problems with um, the blood flow to the baby. Um, so it can has been associated with cot death also um, when the baby is born. Um, and also, um, I suppose even your partner smoking our friends smoking around the baby is dangerous too. Passive smoking? It is very, very dangerous. Yes, it is. And they say if you go out to have a cigarette or somebody goes out to have a cigarette um, outside, they shouldn't hold the baby. Once the baby is born, they shouldn't hold the baby for an hour after that because it's still on your clothes and, um, you know, the baby can actually take that in too and it's dangerous for the baby. So I suppose when the baby is born, they can suffer from chest complaints, pneumonia, they can be in and out of hospital with bronchitis if it's in the house. So it's really important that everybody around doesn't smoke when the so baby is there. They should smoke way out in the garden. Could you tell me, Rona, just um, what help is available? Like if I go into the yes. chemist or to my doctor, can I use, you know, the nicotine patches? Yes, absolutely, Mary, absolutely. So I'll show you what you can use. Very good. That's absolutely one of the best steps that you could do because if you smoke more than 10 a day, you definitely need help because it is, it is an addiction. It's not your fault, really. Your, you know, the nicotine, make it's very, very addictive in the cigarettes. And the more you smoke, the more addictive that it does become. So it, it, your brain, once the nicotine kind of goes down a little bit, you want to crave for another cigarette. But this is part of it. It is a disease in all fairness. So you need help. If you're smoking more than 10 cigarettes a day, I'll show you some of the things. Will I show them to you now? What I, I, I'll show you an example of them so that the patches are here. So you put them on your arm. There's a, a, um, a picture of the patch there. And that lasts for about 16 hours of the day. And this really, really helps, Mary, because you put it on your arm. You put it on, your one, on one arm one day and on the other arm. Then you alternate between the arms. And this works by working in the background. So it kind of helps with the cravings during the day, you know. So it's, it's gradually being released. And then um, it, it works up to 16 hours for the day then, so you don't have anything at night time really to help you then or whatever, but that's okay, because they, they like to, to have a break in pregnancy. They don't want you to have a 24 hour patch. A 16 hour patch is perfect. Is that all right? Yes. But during the day mm. then, the other thing that you could use, Mary, that's very, very helpful, is either gum, if you like chewing gum or whatever, that helps. So if you find that you're getting a craving during the day and it's coming up to maybe a time that you go outside and have a cigarette and you know that that's, the time that you really would want one then you could go and maybe take a little bit of gum and that can help with the craving also so that helps kind of when you really really need it during the day but there's also so it's either that that you could take or also a little inhaler so i'll show you this so if you just like the habit of smoking then you can just open that up and use this and just you know um you can you can just have that and suck on that then or whatever and there's a little cartridge that goes into that and that usually helps. And that's really what you can use in pregnancy. There's some medication out there, but you can't use it in pregnancy. So I would definitely recommend if anybody's smoking and hopefully, you know, your partner and everything would maybe quit with you. And this is one good way of doing it. It's covered on the medical card. I was just going to ask Exactly. That. So that's it. So you're only paying for whatever, your two euro at a time. So um, it's because they are expensive to buy. So I love hearing when somebody has a medical card because, you know, you can go in. You probably will need the doctor maybe to prescribe it for you during mm. the pregnancy. But your GP or your, um, or your doctor here in the hospital should be able to help you in all fairness with that. Electronic cigarettes or e-cigarettes use batteries to heat up nicotine, water and other chemicals with flavourings. This creates a vapour that lets you inhale nicotine without burning tobacco. This is known as vaping. E-cigarettes are still fairly new. We don't know how safe they are, 
so the HSC does not recommend e-cigarettes to help you to quit smoking during pregnancy. It is better to seek help about quitting from your GP or midwife. You could attend a specialist support programme or consider nicotine replacement therapy known as NRT, which doubles your chance of quitting successfully. A short course of NRT to help you to quit is safer for you and your baby than continuing to smoke. Your GP or midwife can talk you through your options or you could check out quit.ie for more information. Also, Ron, I have heard that if you smoke while you're pregnant, you can have a smaller baby. Is that true? Some people say for delivery and everything would think that would be a good thing. But that can come with a huge amount of complications also. And the baby, if it's smaller, it's not getting a good blood flow, Mary. So that's the thing really that we have to be careful of. And as you, you're, it's the placenta isn't working as well, the afterbirth isn't working as well. So that could mean that the baby could be compromised. It could mean that it might have to go into special care maybe when it's born. Um, it might have, you know, different complications when it's born, um, chest complications and that. So, you know, it's important that your baby is the right weight for the time of your pregnancy all the way through. And sometimes if, if it happens that the, the pregnancy, if the baby is, is too small and the baby has to be delivered early, that's not a good thing either because prematurity comes mm. with all different problems too, Mary. Yeah. So this brings me on to alcohol because yes. there's kind of a mixed message out there. Yeah. It was years ago in all communities, they'd be saying a can of Guinness yeah. would give you the iron yes, that you were yes, lacking yes, in pregnancy. Yes, yes, yes. But nowadays I'm hearing that no alcohol in pregnancy is safe. Can you give me a bit of information I around that course. place? The HSE are definite on that now and our health authority are saying that no, that you shouldn't have any alcohol during the pregnancy. Something shocking Roon has come up to me and I, and I don't I don't have much information on it and hopefully you can help me. Is caffeine. Oh caffeine, I suppose look at well, there's a lot of caffeine in things that we, we probably don't even know that there is, you know. Um so say for instance your tea, they say that 200 milligrams of caffeine in, in the day when you're pregnant is really the highest, so 150 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. So I'll tell you what's in say a cup of tea, will I show you what's in a Could cup of tea? Could you give me an example that? please? Yes. I will of course, so I have the tea here and the coffee, okay, so, so we have about 35 milligrams in a cup of tea. But if you were keeping your tea bags in and had a lovely fresh brew of tea, it'd even be more than that, that's just with the tea bag. That's how much is in that. So that'd be probably just dipping your tea bag in and out or whatever. Um, so that's how much is in that. And then your coffee is more, your instant coffee. Um, would you like your coffee, Mary? Oh, I love my yeah. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 65 milligrams there, Mary. So that's more. So if you look at that, really, when you think of it, you'd be up to 132 cups of coffee in a day is in around the level that, you know, that really you have to be kind of starting to be watching what you're, you're taking after that then. Caffeine is found in tea, coffee, chocolate and energy drinks. When you are pregnant, you need to limit your caffeine intake to 200 milligrams per day. This is the same as two mugs of instant coffee or two mugs of tea with a bar of chocolate. High levels of caffeine can cause high blood pressure for the mother and low birth weight for the baby. Try water or decaffeinated tea or coffee instead. Energy drinks should be avoided.